As always, tell everybody greetings and welcome to the heartland of Kentucky. Home to fast horses, good looking women, and tasty bourbon. Or could that be good looking horses and fast women? <laughs> it's hard to say, <laughs> nonetheless. Uh, I've been in the business now for 36 years. I am a fifth generation distiller. I just happen to be the first one in the family to do it legally. Maybe not so, but nonetheless. Today you will see what Kentucky is known for. Two signature industries, horse races, race horses, and bourbon. What's the common thread? It's the water. That beautiful limestone rich water we have here in Kentucky builds strong bones for those race horses, but it also is the starting point for tasty bourbon. So today we're going to walk around and look. <sighs> bourbon. Does it have to be made in the Commonwealth of Kentucky? And the answer is no. It can be made anywhere in the United States by standard. Does good bourbon have to be made in Kentucky? I'd like to think so. <laughs> oh, well over 90% of it is made here in the Commonwealth. And again, it's the water. That is the big difference there. So nonetheless, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a walk around. I will talk out here because it's loud in there and I know um, sometimes it's hard to uh, shout over the, uh, the noise that we have. But nonetheless, uh, the standard for bourbon says it must be made from a mash of cereal grains not less than 51% corn. So we're allowed, as the trucks go by, the other 49%, we can play with our food. We can add more corn for sweetness. We can add rye for that boldness, that spiciness, that pepperiness. Uh, we can add wheat, which is a little more neutral. And then of course we add malted barley for the enzymes. The enzymes in that malted barley break down the starches and simple sugars. Uh, because all cereal grains are very starchy and that thing is gonna get you. Whoop, there we go. There you go, we got him, shoot. No, oh, <laughs> after, after you now. So what we're gonna do is we're, currently we're making a rye-based bourbon. So we're using corn, rye, malted barley. Let's go for a walk. Okay. This is our cooker, our mash tub. Again, we add the uh, beautiful limestone water, the ground grain, we heat it, cool it, and send it to a fermenter. So let's go this way. Oh. Yeah, it's warm. It's warm. Yes. But it's feel... warm from the process or you, you heat it? No, 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 no. We do not heat it. When you break down sugar into alcohol yes. and carbon dioxide, yeah. it gives off heat. Yeah. So, so we have to cool it and there's actually plus, cooling yeah. coils inside. Okay. So otherwise it gets too warm. It's kind of like uh, baking bread. Okay. You want to keep your, your dough warm, but you don't want to let it get too hot. Okay, so what the temperature? I'll have to do it in Fahrenheit, can't do it in Celsius. <laughs> yeah, uh, less than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I'm terrible at those conversions, no, I apologize. No, that's no problem. So, so why do you cook it in the first place? So you, you cook it and then you cool it down again? Yeah, we, we cook it uh, to break down the starches and the simple sugars, but also too to sterilize it in case there's any uh, bacteria in there. And then once you put it in, it produces carbon dioxide, so things can't fall out uh, from the from the air because the carbon dioxide is coming off, and so it kind of builds its own protective buffer here. That's why you can actually feel 
the heat and the uh, carbon dioxide coming off. A political stupid question, but if, if the sugars are being produced by the cooking, yes. what's the function of the enzymes from okay. the body? Okay, sugar, okay, cereal grains have uh, very starchy, long chain sugars. So you break them down into smaller pieces because yeast can eat sugar, but they can't eat starch. It's too big, too, too large, too complicated. And so it eats the sugar and then produces the alcohol and the carbon dioxide. After two and a half days, it is now about 10% alcohol, referred to as distiller's beer. And so for the extraction, we'll send it to that beer well to keep it stirred up, and then we'll send it to the beer still. Have you settled on the yeast, or are you still experimenting with yeast? No, we, we just have one, one type of yeast, okay. and it's dried and produced for us. Okay. And so we just add it, and then it hydrates, it wakes up, and it eats the sugar because it's hungry. Like hibernation. Yeah. Well, that's a stripping column. Yes, exactly. It's exactly what that is. Okay, our column, as well as our other processing equipment here, all made by Vendome. Vendome of Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. I consider it to be the industry standard for distilling equipment. I know there are some uh, companies in, in uh, Scotland, I know there's one in Germany, but you know, again, I think locally. <laughs> so I think Vendo. This is the smallest continuous still that they make. Mm -hmm. If you had anything smaller, then you would do pot still, where you charge it, heat it, distill, cool it down, empty it. But this can, is a continuous still. Vapors go out the top, alcohol, water, and the flavor components. As a vapor condenses and drops down into the uh, middle pot, the doubler for double distillation or second distillation. Goes out as a vapor and then cool down and over to the spirit safe. So it's one process. Yes, it's a with, continuous with, process. Without, without condensing it, without getting the beer and then... It it, exactly, yeah, yeah, you don't stop. You just, right. everything just keeps going. So, right. what is the final degree? Uh, let's see, that's gonna be about, uh, 68 but we'll have to reduce that before we put it yeah. before we put it in the cask exactly what are you reducing it to uh, 60? Uh, 60 is what we're doing currently yes so we'll add purified water and then put it in the new limestone charred oak barrel water. well it's limestone water when it starts but it's not limestone water when we add it of yeah. course because you want limestone water on that end of the house when you are creating your mash because the yeast need that calcium mm. to help them grow. Yeah. But it's not, not such a good idea to put uh, calcium into the barrel. Okay, how come with 18 um, units here, but you're only seeing uh, 15 of them being used? What happens up there? That okay, that's all, it's all, it's all vapor up there. Okay. It's all vapor up there. So there's plenty of action going on up there. Yeah. It's just that there are not any solids. That last one that you don't, that you one, two, three, four down, right. that's just where it has a little blow up every okay. once in a while, okay. a, a little burp. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. You're using old 18, uh, um, yeah, yeah, it's it's all being used, but it comes in, and if you look around the back, you can see where it goes in, and it's sloshing there, and it's dropping down. Yeah. But everything up is just uh, vapors. Okay. So at what height you you picking up the alcohol at this height? Okay. <laughs> You, 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 oh, the vapor goes out the top. On the top? Yes. Yeah, it goes out. Down to the condenser. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. as a vapor, yes. And if you look down in. Yeah. Yeah, give us just a minute, John. Oh, yeah, you're good. Yep. Spirit safe, right? Yep, spirit safe. And it all goes. This is company from Kentucky. Yeah, exactly, in Louisville. Yeah. I, I thought I came across a Vendome still in Guyana, even. 
<laughs> you see them all around the world. Not me. Okay, so we'll collect the distillate, add purified water to get it to 60% alcohol, okay. and then we'll put it in barrels. So uh, your cost is 60% uh, 60%. That is what we're putting in. Right the yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's go downstairs. And what does this do? I'm sorry. Uh, Why is it, what are we looking at here? Eye candy. Okay. It's eye candy. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to have the spirit safe there, okay. but it does look good. But it's also a reminder to the uh, operators. They see what's going in. They see what's coming out. Okay. Yeah. And that's the only reason why copper is outside. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's eye candy. This yep. is a click. Um, how many days of the year is a liquid active in exchanging aromas? See, yeah. See, I, I would like to think that it's it's always in motion. Yeah. Because okay, I fill this barrel up when it's cold. Yeah. That 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 liquid is going to get warm. It's going to push out into the wood. I'm a physicist. Uh, define cold. Okay. <laughs> and what temperature? Waffling. I like it to be very hot yeah. this time of year. I like for it to be very cold yeah. in the winter, okay? Because the more extreme, yeah. the, the better the, the, the swing. Yes, yeah. exactly. Because, because when it gets hot, it pushes out into the wood. When it gets cold, it comes back in. Yeah, yeah. And so that, that's what I like is for it to be that way. And that's why uh, I think it ages better here than uh, some of the other places. Now, you go to Texas, they put in at 60% yeah. alcohol. Yeah. There, they can come out sometimes 70%. Yeah, I know, because of the humidity level of Texas. Yeah, wait. Yeah, yeah, temperature and humidity. Yeah, yeah, wait. I noticed yeah. some of the cars will have a bung hole on the side and some on the top. Yes. So are you doing prototypes about housing along with? The We're doing floor? both, yes. We're not doing them on site. Right. We, we have... Can we taste the ascension? That, that is the ascension. It, yeah. Yeah. Did you see the difference of the both barrels? Honestly, no. I mean, uh, the, the idea is that you have this closed barrel. And so whether it's lying on its side or whether it's standing up, you can't really see a difference. This is what we saw upstairs, fresh off the still, unaged. So that's a 60%. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I saw it this morning. No, 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 no. If, you, if you're doing this, your day is over. It's simply over. <laughs> you will have we have a long day ahead of us. Yeah. <laughs> New make? Yes. Thank you. Five years old. Yep. That's what's easy. What's the difference? The color. It, it, <laughs> one of three. <laughs> color, A smell, of cost. and taste. Yeah. Yep. What's the difference? Right here. That new charred oak barrel. What does it do? It adds a color from those caramelized wood sugars. It also adds um, extractables like vanillin, vanilla. Uh, also adds caramel, oakiness. And so that's why it undergoes after five years in this barrel that beautiful tra uh, transformation into bourbon whiskey. Okay. And so, anyway, I'll encourage uh, everybody to grab a glass, take a taste of the new make, or take a taste of the aged. Up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Yeah. 
So, so what's the reason behind that? So do you think if you, if you, what would happen if you go higher? Okay, you can go a little bit higher. You can go to 62.5% by law. But we go to 60% to get more water extractables. Because that's the difference between the two concentrations is just water. So we want to get more of those water extractables from the wood. No, no, it's more fruity. Yeah, absolutely. After a couple of... And, and Ken, yes. you said 62 and a half by law. Yes. What if you did it at 63? It's then no longer no, no, Correct. But you could do it. You could call it a good You speed. could, it's yeah. But why? Well, no, I'm saying Yeah, it's exactly. Good. You know. Okay. One of the things that I've learned being in this business, don't mess up a good thing. If it ain't broken. <laughs> and and don't, don't hurry. Uh, just take your time. Yeah. Patience. You have to have patience in this business. You know what I mean? Patience never is linear. Okay. This is a new ascension. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Second distillery that we will see under construction. Once we do that, then we will put up warehousing. Okay. But we need to do one thing at a time. Yeah. No, no, okay. The Rick House also requires flat land. Which we have. Which we have a little bit down the road. So it'll be stored off site, right? Yeah, it'll be stored there, yes. How far is it away? Let's see, about three, four, oh, yeah. I'd say about five kilometers. Yeah. Well, now you're planning several stores. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They will be uh, seven. Seven. Seven is normal, and they will be on their side. Right. But you don't do it like chicken man has with metal outside? Yeah. Uh, normally, yes. That is the best way to do it is metal because then it, heat and cold much faster than let's say in a wooden building or even worse in a brick or a stone building and then we want to name it so you want you want to have it as close to the elements as possible you want the temperature change to have its greatest effect um, do you have any any plans experimenting with smaller barrels as well, or larger ones? Honestly, no. That that part of it, because now you get into a um, a storage issue. If you use smaller barrels, then the ricks that you build for these won't work. Right. So you, you try to stay with a standard size. Now, you can go with different char levels. You can go with different toasting. Those kind of things you can change. But as far as the size of the barrels, we're going to stick with what we have. Yeah, and then smaller barrels, uh, the maturation would be too quick, right? It, it could be, yes. Because, you know, uh, to be called straight bourbon whiskey and not have an age statement on it, it has to be at least four years old. So if it ages out in two years, then you have to put an age statement on it. Now, it may taste good, but now you put that declaration on it and then somebody's gonna say, that's only two years old, it's not gonna taste good. Because remember, you eat and drink with your eyes. That's what you see. We actually started operation in 2018. Okay. okay, and then it was taken over by Heaven's Door in 2022. Yep. Okay, so originally you guys had about a yield of about 6,000 barrels a year. Right. You've ramped it up to close to 10,000 now. We've ramped it up from six to about 8,000. Okay, and now we're building a second distillery on site that will produce an additional 40,000 barrels. Okay. So it'll be five times the capacity of that uh, facility we just went through. And you were part of the original team with Six Mile Creek that started this whole thing. And a lot yes. of people stayed on, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing about uh, this business is uh, once you get whiskey in your blood, it stays with you. There you go. <laughs> All right. And so this is the visitor center we're building. So you see it's still under construction, but we're going to do a little quick tour. Um, and once that is ready to open is when the yeah. distillery will be officially open. And, then... <laughs> and we're branding it the Heaven's Door Distillery at Six Mile Creek. So, uh...
Okay. But it is bumpy because they're under construction. Sure. Okay. Yeah, no but that's where over there, hang the right. Okay. Again, this is a construction zone. I don't know how to get the offer of this thing. A little behind the scenes. Yeah. Sneak preview. So there's like a six mile creek office that were up on Bardstown Road. Yes. That's like within a mile or so. Prepared with warehouses? Do you have warehouses? Oh, warehouses. No, okay. no, we do not at okay. this point. So we're storing off site okay. until after we build the distillery. Yeah. So we'll get that going. Then we'll build warehouses. Okay. Exactly. Not not trying to do everything at one time because you run out of cash. Right. And definitely more the bourbon way. Now, yeah. what they really are is one step. Yeah. Don't Impatient. Be hasty, don't, be, don't be hasty because so the idea is to get out. Exactly. Yeah. So, got to be uh, so that's what they're looking like. But they'll look like uh, corn blinds. Yeah. Yeah. This place has come a long way since the last 30 days. This actually is going to be kind of cool out here, Sammy, when we get through with this because there's going to be one, two, three, I guess it's four, four layers up. Over here will be a silo that has the um, elevator in it. And then over here, there'll be a silo and it'll have uh, stairs. So to, like at Broad Run Park, uh -huh. where you have that that, that little yellow uh, silo out there that you can walk up. Oh, I didn't know that was okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I look forward to putting it all on our tour. See, I, I think there'll be like a bar here, and there'll be merch out here and, and everything. But there'll also be these areas upstairs where people can buy a drink and then sit down and relax and talk and enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, this place is going to really be awesome once it's uh, complete. So this is the this is part of the uh, new distillery. Yep. The second portion of the building uh, they're putting in the foundation now. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> so for the new distillery, will we the same distillery equipment you're using? Uh, no, uh, the uh, the still will actually be made by Forsyth in Scotland. Oh, Scotland. Wow. Yes. How big is the total amount of the investment you take here? I make whiskey. I, I don't get in the finances, so it's it's the people that have the cash that know that. I, I don't. Okay. It, those numbers, those numbers are staggering. I know. Um, and this one will end up becoming a tasting room. So when we go inside here, you'll see there's no electricity in here, right? But uh, we'll have the table set up, we'll have some barrels in there, and that's where we'll do our formal tasting on all of our core expressions. So it's our Kentucky bur straight bourbon, our Tennessee straight, our double barrel, and our rye. And so this will be the first one there, and we'll go check out this uh, this building. It's beautiful. Yeah, one in. Great. Okay, let's go around the back and then back through the uh, front door. Oldest this one. Again, a lot of these buildings were based, uh, built in the late 1700s. 
river's lower, oh, the creek's lower today. Yes. We need rain. Yeah. I mean, usually you can stand up here, if it's deep, you can see fish, you know, yeah. going through here and all that. But this is the creek. Yeah, this yes. is Fish Mouth Creek, yeah. And so there'll be the tasting in there and probably some chairs out here where people can sit and relax, hopefully with a little more water running. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is around bringing single barrel. Did yep. you all get rain last yep. night or no? It should help a lot. I'm sorry. It's like you all didn't get the rain that we did yesterday. Uh-uh. It poured at my house last night. Yeah, same here. But again, Okay, we'll come on through here and then we'll close them up. And of course, this was a two story. Yep. And the sleeping quarters were upstairs, the living quarters downstairs. People were a lot shorter back then. Yeah. Well, you think about how much more effort it would have been to uh, put another log in yes. to jack it up. Yes. That's what Ken was just pointing out, that this originally was a two-story building. So again, all the sleeping area was upstairs and all the main living was downstairs and whatnot. But For what was it used before? Somebody's home. This was a home. It was really a Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. In Probably a, in around 1800, 1790s. Okay. Yes, this was, somebody built this and oh. lived in it and farmed. Oh, then you know where. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Welcome to the USA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do we know the year when this was built? We think the 1790s. We're not really sure, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, this building was relocated from somewhere uh, up in West Virginia. Oh, okay. Because remember, you know, a lot of people uh, after the Whiskey Rebellion, you know, came across the Alleghenies. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they, they started settling, and that's why, you know, um, People talk about Daniel Boone and obviously his uh, brother Squire. Mm 